Hey guys, it's May May, and today we're going to be making two cards. These were cards you guys requested that I show you after we released our Compose stamp set. This is the one that got the most requests. You wanted to see how I did that curvy um, staff, and also this one. So today we're going to make these two cards. I'm going to show you how I did this background, but I'm also going to do a different background because I got a new tool I want to play with. But first, let me show you how I did that background. So I want to do a rainbow background, and I'm going to use my ink blending tool from Pink and May. It's um, the brush tool that I've shown you guys before. We are out of stock on this right now, but we have more coming in a couple weeks. So if you are, in, are interested in getting notified when this comes in, you can put in you can put your email in on our website for this particular product, and you'll get a notification of it because I know everybody's asking about it right now. All right, where do we start? I do not know. I've got my um, cloth here to clean. I'll just put it like this to clean my little brush off in between. Let's start with red. Let's just be bold, right? So I'm going to use the color Glorious from VersaClaire, and I'm going to start right here. And on the end, I'm going to do a little bit of rainbow color. So I'm going to start with red. Isn't that cool? I love this brush. Now I'm just wiping this off on my cloth, just like this, in between the colors. Honestly, if they blend together a little bit, it's not going to bother me. All right, we're going to go to orange. So this color is actually called summertime. Doesn't it look like summer? I'm going to turn this around because I'm going to come from the other side now. Never done this one. I've played with it with different colors, but not trying to do rainbow, but we're going to see what happens. So I was being a little too cautious. Let's get some more ink on there. And I'm just going to mix those colors or blend those colors right there. And I'm just doing some Roy G. Biv colors. All right, so there's that. I'm going to wipe that color off of my brush. Close this up before I put my wrist in it because I'm known. I'm known to do it. Okay, let's do some yellow. So I just wipe the orange off onto my little cloth. And I'm going to kind of smear this around on here see if I can get some good yellow in there. Very good. And now I'm just going to come under that orange and go across the page. Isn't this cool? I love this tool. Okay, so then I'm going to go to my green, which is called Verdant. Is it Verdant or Verdant? I do not know. V-E-R-D-A-N-T is the name of this color. Cleaning the yellow off, I'm going to pick up that green like I did the yellow, kind of rubbing it across my pad there. And then we're going to come under that yellow, do our green. My yellow and my green are pretty similar colors, so I'm going to do my green a little heavier it's not that they're actually similar on the pad itself, but once you kind of dilute them like this, there's not a whole lot of difference. So I'm going to be a little heavier with my green to try to get that transition. When I put the blue down, I'll probably get that transition anyway. See, there's a little more green in there. All right, clean the green off. Do you love how you can just wipe this brush and keep going? It's really cool. All right, let's do some blue. This color is called Paradise. Probably don't want to be as heavy on this one. Let's just see what happens. Oh, it's pretty. Take that up into that green a bit. Oh, it's so good. I'm gonna come back and address this. I got a little heavy on that one spot. I'm gonna come back and do some more yellow in a second. Cleaning the blue off of my brush and going into the purple. All right, it's my last rainbow color. Let's pick up that purple. I'm gonna lay that down. Isn't that pretty? So cool. So cool. Love that. All right, I'm going to clean my brush and go back to that yellow. I'm going to get a little more aggressive with it. By the way, that yellow color is called Cheerful. It is very cheerful. All right, I'm going to clean that off my brush real good because I don't want to cross that over into this one. And then I'm going to rub it, see if I can pick up more yellow. I can see it. That's good. All right, let's go back in that section. Much better. I just had kind of a a blank spot there that I didn't really love. I think I'm going to do a little more orange. I can't help it. It's too fun. It's too fun. I'm really about backgrounds lately. Have y'all noticed? I'm really loving this process. So let's turn this this way and see if we can clean up my little smear mark. Cool beans. All right, that's my rainbow background. Wipe my brush off again. My brush has not been cleaned with soap and water yet. It needs to be, but I've used it for all the backgrounds I showed you in my previous video with it, plus this one, and I'm still going strong. So there it is. Put that little guy away. And we are ready to start our stamping. So this is the staff from our stamp set called Compose, okay? 
The cool thing about acrylic stamps that you can move and see through the block on is we can move these how we want them. What I did was I took a press. This press has feet, right? So I think that's important. Either do this on like your positioner, your stamp positioner, or use it with a press. And what I did was I laid my staff down in one corner, okay? And then I just kind of worked it around with my fingers, laying it in a curved shape. Now that's pretty simple, but I also can go back and adjust. Let's say I want this to be a little curvier. I can do it like that. So I get that kind of, I love that curve. That's pretty. Now what I have discovered in stamping this is you really need to take your time and you really need to work these corners with stamping. They get a little of the pressure and they kind of flatten out a little bit. So you really have to spend some, some time on those curves when you are pressing into place. I'll show you what I mean. So let me get my ink. Just going to use some Nocturne since we've been using all these VersaClairs. And I'm going to ink this up really good. So this is black ink. And you want to make sure you get all those twists and turns. And you're going to spend a moment when you put this down. Now you, Oh, I like the way that looks. That's pretty cool. It looks different than my last one. But you could always do it this way as well. Okay, but I like this way. So what I'm going to do, because I have it on my little feet or I have it on my little press, I can sit it like this and I can move it around. Um, to get it where I want it before I press it, okay? Now I'm going to press. Now here's the thing. One little go over like that is not going to do it. You think it will, but it won't. These curves have been altered, so you really have to give them some pressure to get that ink off of them. I don't know why it is, and it may not work this time. It did, but for some reason, a little bit right there, it skipped, even though I pressed that hard. For some reason, when you alter those curves, you've really got to spend some time on them, okay? Let's go ahead and stamp this other background we did, too. So let's ink this up. Maybe we'll stamp it the opposite way. So I don't know why it causes me to have to press so hard, but it just does. Let's do this one like this. But I tried doing it by just, you know, my regular pressure. But I had to add a little more to get all of those little lines to go down. I think it's just because we changed the integrity of the stamp in some way. See right there where I missed it all together? And the ink is still there, even though I pressed. It's something about the curve. So just be mindful of that. I'm going to try to match it up and see if I can fix it. <laughs> Let's just see. Hey, I did it. Pretty good. So just be mindful of those curves. Whenever you do that twist, you really have to work those curves down. All right, now I want to tell you something. Don't leave this like this, okay? Once you're through stamping it in the curve, take it off, put it onto your work surface, and let it relax back out. You can even let this sit for a few minutes, okay? You do not want to leave it on that block curved, or it might kind of form to that. I don't think it would stay that way, but it might form to that. Another thing you can do if you get too worried about it is you can place it onto your block and put it down in one side and just kind of give it a light little stretch and put it down straight, and that will bring it back to its regular shape too. Just don't leave it on here curved for any, like overnight especially, because it might, might, might stay that way. All right, let's do some more stamping. So since we released this stamp set, so many of you have told me what all these little pieces are that I don't know what they are. <laughs> and this one is some sort of rest, I think. I think that's what I was told, but I think it looks pretty on the end of the staff. <laughs> so that's where I'm gonna put it. So I'm just gonna ink this little guy up. And I'm going to place it right at the end of my staff because I think it looks pretty to kind of close that staff off like that. Isn't that pretty? So, I, again, I don't know. It probably means something. And my music fans out there all know what it is. I don't, I don't read music. I can read notes, but I don't read music. I can sing it, but I can't read it. All right, so there's that little guy. Now we need our treble clef. Now this clef, I'm using the bigger one from the set because I like for it to hang off of the um, staff on this particular um, project. So I'm using the big guy, ink him up really well. And I just kind of bring him over here and put him on a little angle. Isn't he pretty, so big like that? I like him on the rainbow. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna put him more on a curve because this one's so curved. Good deal. Now, I want to remind you, if you have the stamp set, it is made to be sort of a broken image. The lines are not perfect. We did it kind of distressed. So when you see where I have like these little um, distressed edges, it's supposed to be like that. If you look at the stamp set, you can see that. All right, now what we're going to do is just play with the other pieces on the set. I'm going to get the, all right, is the number sign a sharp or a flat? I do not know, but I'm going to put it over here like so because it would kind of live in that area. 
then I'm just going to play. I'm just going to pull notes out and place them wherever I want them. Now, I'm not trying to keep these on the staff itself. I thought it would be pretty to have these kind of up and down. So, no, this is not how they should look. I kind of want it to look like somebody took the staff and shook it and all the notes started to fall away. Does that make sense? I think that would be kind of cool looking. Show dash what we're doing there. So, I'm going to get another one here. Put this one up here at the top. Then I'll do the same over here. And again, I just want them to look like they're kind of falling off of the staff. So I'm just going to run through and finish filling in here and there with these little notes, and we'll get right back together. So that is how I did it with the curved staff. And on my finished card, all I did was I took this little um, sentiment called Victory in Jesus, which there are some songs. These are Vince's a few of his favorite hymn songs. He loves a lot of hymn songs, but these are some of his favorite hymn songs. And I took Victory in Jesus and I just put it on a piece of paper, glued it down and put it that way. I'm not going to create these into cards just yet because I have, I'm making backgrounds for our stamp set that I have coming. And I think this might be really cool for that. So I'm going to save these for that. But that's what I did to create the curved staff. Now, the other thing I did on this one was I added some little bling in different places. I'm going to hold off on that because I don't know exactly what I'm going to do to finish these off but that's background number one. Now let me show you the other one, this guy. So many of you guys like this one as well, and I wanna show you how we do it. So this card was actually inspired by one of you. Um, I was sent an ATC card that did this. They used music paper in the background and they stamped the church on top, and I thought it was so cute. And so it was inspired by that. So let me show you what I did. So I went to my music staff, that's where I'm gonna start. And I already have it straight on my block from just a moment ago. And I used brown on this one. I did not use black ink. So I'm going to stamp this up on the page in brown. Now, I did not measure where these go. I'm going to show you what I did. I had my little sheet on my work surface like this. And I just started with one on and off the page. And that was one. I just established one. And notice it's not a whole staff. Some of it went off the page. And that's what I wanted. And then I went to the next one and I just eyeballed up a little less than the width of the staff and I just stamped. And honestly, this is how I did it. I did not measure. If you need to measure, you could easily make marks on the side of your card, on your um, card stock. But I just literally eyeballed all the way up. Isn't that cool how we can make the staff? And this is what made me realize we can take the same stamp set and use this as texture on the backs of our cards too. All right, so then another one. I'm just trying to kind of stay as straight as I can with the last one. I'm just matching up the line, if that makes sense. Now, I went a little high because I had to squeeze my title in, which is fine with me. It doesn't bother me. And if I don't get a title, that's fine too because I can just do music notes all the way across. So let's add one more. We may not have room for a title, but that's okay. Like I said, if it's just music notes, it'll be just as pretty. All right, I'm going to leave my ink there because now we're going to put all our music notes on. So I did this one a little more traditional. I started with the actual size treble clef. So I'm just going to ink this up in the same brown. And I'm going to put it right here on the staff. Okay. And I even did the three, four time. Wouldn't it be funny? Like I should have paid attention. Vince has hymn books. I should have gotten a hymn book. And since I did have that on Waylord, I should have seen exactly what the time was for it. If it was three, four or whatever the time was. And I should have done that one, but I didn't. So, all right, I'm going to stamp that on there. So I get three, four time. And then it is sharps and flat time. I don't know if there's any sharps or flats in this one, but we're just going to put a little number sign up here for music notes. There's that one. And now I just go to town. Here's what I did. I'm not trying to make an actual piece of music, okay? I just went through and I started. And I put the notes in one of the spots on the staff. I'll show you. See how I chose that line on the staff and I just put the notes in there? And using the same one, I work my way around the page doing that same thing on all the staffs. Just mixing it up so this guy lands in different places, different spots, all along the sheet. I'm not doing it on the same line every time. See how I raise that one up? Just, you know, mix it up. This one, you're not even going to see the notes. They're down underneath. I think I'll add another one up here. I like him up tall like that. Okay. Then I'm just going to go to another set of notes in our set. 
This one has the little, I call that a carryover, but I think it's a slide. I don't know. Don't quote me on music stuff. <laughs> That's Vinny's department. And this one, I just come in and place it where I want it. Just any old place. This one I kind of did, you know, on the line, off the line. Remember, I'm not making this for somebody to, to try to play it. I'm just making music sheet background. All right, and now I'm going to do a different set of notes. Let's do, I don't want to do that. Let's do some, some, not singles, but these little double notes. I don't know what they're called. Double notes is what I call them. Now you can add as many, of you can go absolutely crazy adding your notes, or you can add just a few. It's up to you. It's your music. You're composing it. Isn't that cool? All right. And now I'm going to grab a single note, kind of do some filling in in places. You can also do single notes yourself and make them look like that. Isn't that cool? A lot of rises and falls in this, in this piece of music. <laughs> okay, I'm going to call that one done. That's what I did there. Now, I dug into another stamp set from our collection. And it's called Then Sings My Soul. And I want to use this piece right here. This piece is to give the look of torn paper. I did not love the way it came out on my original card. So I'm going to do it slightly different this time and see if I like it better. On my original card, I made it too thick around the edges. I want it to be thinner than that. So I'm just going to place this onto my block like so. And I'm going to use my darker ink. So the one I used first was Acorn. This one is Pinecone. It's a little darker. Let me use it. And let me put my little protector sheet down. Just lift this up like that. Or put that on my little protector sheet. And I'm going to ink this up. This piece is really neat. You can even use it to make a um, like a mountain scene if you wanted to in the background of a card. But I think this is a pretty cool piece. And I'm just going to line it up at the bottom of my cardstock. And whatever gets on there gets on there. But I did go a little lower. See, I just wanted that little torn edge. I did it way too thick last time. I do like this darker brown color because I did change that too. Doing it a little darker this time. So now I'm just going to work my way around the card, giving it this torn paper edge. Isn't that cool? I like that. I like it a lot. Okay, let's do another one. So that edge turned out more like I want it. I like that one better. I got too heavy with this one. I went in too deep. See all that? And I also used a lighter brown. In using the lighter brown, you could see my staff through it, and I didn't want that to happen. So using the shade darker, I really like better, and doing less of that um, of that whole piece on there. All right, it's time to distress ink it. And I distressed the whole thing. I wonder if I should, hmm, let's try distressing it with our ink blending brush. I know I can do it with my little ink pad, but let's try it like this. Let's just see what happens. So let's bring this guy back over. I'm going to start in this corner. Oh, it's pretty. I like that. I like how that looks. All right, let's do some more. Perfect. I don't want to overdo it. That is great. Okay, close all this up. I've got ink everywhere on my work surface. Move this guy. Now it's time to stamp our church. So another little design change I'm going to make is instead of going back to my lighter brown that I did my music with, I'm going to go to the darker brown that I did the edges with, and I'm going to stamp my church in the darker brown. Now, something I want you to think about, okay, when you're doing this, I'm going to color this church, but I'm going to color it with color pencils. If you're going to color with something else, you need to be mindful of what inks you're using here so you don't get any blends or bleeds on your um, coloring if that happens. For example, if you were to use alcohol markers, I did not use the right ink for that, so I would have a lot of bleeding. Okay, so I'm going to stamp this guy down right on top of that sheet. It is so pretty. Look, right on top of it. And then I'm going to take some of the trees in the set and do some trees around the edge. Did I say the name of this set? This set is called Gather Together that has the little church on it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Pulling out all my stamp sets today, by the way. So I'm just going to carry this little guy, and I don't have to do it low, but I think I'll do it something about like that. Do that guy there. And then what I did on my other one was I just took the same stamp. You don't have to. You can get a different one. And I just kind of carried it over here for another little tree and kind of continue that little ground. And then I'm doing one on the other side, and I'm not even going to go to the smaller trees in the set. I'm going to use the other side here and stamp it just like this to get that tree. So perfect, that's your background, okay? Now we can color. 
and I'm using my color pencils for this. So I'm just going to lay them all out where I can see them. And the first thing I did was I colored the windows to look like stained glass. So I took a color and I went into each panel and I just colored each one in different places. I'm not matching them. I want them to look kind of handmade um, in different places with different colors. So I'm gonna color the stained glass first. So I've colored all my stained glass and then I colored the church and I just did it in kind of a brown color. This one is, it doesn't have a name on it. It's just brown. It's kind of the color of that ink. And what I did was I just ran through and colored it. Just the whole church. And you might think, but why would you color the church brown? I wanted it to have a sepia look. I wanted the um, stained glass to stand out, but I wanted the church to kind of sink back in kind of a sepia tone. I thought it was kind of cool. Now, in certain spots on the set, I used the same color pencil, but with more pressure, I did some spots darker. So like the roof here, I did that one a little darker just by being more concentrated with the color, pressing down a little firmer. And then around the bell, just thought this would be cool to give it some definition. And then around the windows and the door. And this little peak needs to be darker. See how that just kind of brings the definition of the church back when you do those little darker pieces. And this little area right here. I love it. I think that turns out cute. All right, let's do green in those hedges. So just take my green marker and just kind of swirl it around, or my green color pencil and swirl it around here. And then something I did on my first one was I took a gray color pencil and went around the church, but I didn't like the gray. So I'm going to use a different color. This is a lighter brown. And what I'm doing is just lightly going around the edge of the church to almost seem like I'm inking around the edges because I want it to kind of stand off the page a little bit. So just lightly. And I'm not doing it for light. I'm really just doing it to kind of lift it off the page. So I'm not worried about a light source here. I'm just going around the whole church. And then this move is, in my mind, just bringing that out a little bit. You could probably even just ink this if you wanted to. But there is the church all done. Isn't that cool? I need to color it right inside of here. That's a little pale inside that bell tower. So I did one more thing on this card before putting it onto the card front. And that is, actually not before, let me tell you this. I'm not putting this on the card front today. I'm going to save it and use it. I don't know how I'm going to put it yet, but I'll put it on a card front later. But once you put this on the card front, you do this so it can dry. This is Crystal Glaze from Nouveau. I wanted the glass to look like glass. So I took my Crystal Glaze and I just painted with the Crystal Glaze over my color pencil. I just thought that was so pretty to make the glass actually feel like glass and kind of pop. And again, I'm not putting this on a card base yet. This is perfectly fine, by the way. If you don't know where you want to use one, but you know you want to make a card background, it's perfectly fine to make the background and not put it on a card. Now on YouTube, people don't love that. I know y'all like to see a finished product, like start to finish, but sometimes this is what we do and then we get ready. And like I said, I've got a stamp set coming that I really want to use these backgrounds with. I missed a little spot. That's something I want to show you that I do. This is a tip for your Nouveau. I pick it up and I look for the light to hit. And if I see a spot where the light's not hitting where I want it to, I go back and touch up and I can tell right here on this corner that the light is not hitting. And it doesn't even necessarily mean I need to add more product. I might just move that product around, which is what I just did. So then I can check and see if I like that better. Yes, now I'm getting light into that corner I wasn't getting before. Isn't that cool? So that is the two, well, actually we did three today, and that is the backgrounds that I had done on those. So these are the three we did today. And I want to show you just how different, which I think is so cool. Look how different. We changed those up so much. Even though this one's very, very similar, the arch goes in a different way. I did the music a little different. And this one is completely different with its colors. And then let me show you this one. This is what I do. I did it one time and I made the changes. And I think the second one is so much better. Let me show you. This one to me is much better. Now, you may love this one better. That's okay. Beauty's in the eye of the beholder, right? I just think I like the colors of this, and I love the darker torn paper edge better on that one. So there you go. That's how we did those backgrounds and made our cards. All I did on these two, this is a simple card. Just They are just folded and glued on there because I don't know who will be getting these yet. So I like to leave a blank in there until I know who's getting them. So there you go, guys, making more of our backgrounds. And today it was 
stretching your stamp set for real, stretching it out of shape. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that. These are super fun to do. And you know the deal. If you do any of these backgrounds, if you use this stamp set called Compose or any of these that I showed today, please share it with us on our customer gallery. And as a matter of fact, if you'd like to win a $50 gift card to our store, every time you share a photo of a project you do using this stamp set through the month, um, of what month is this? May. <laughs> you can be entered to win a $50 gift card. And all you have to do is share your picture of your work that you've done. Hey guys, do me a favor. If you like this video, let me know by giving it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe and share this video with your friends. Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you again next time. Bye-bye.